Bangladesh approves death penalty for uh, people who commit sex non-consensually. Again, thank you, YouTube, for the coded language I have to use. If you want to know what I'm referring to, please see the title shown on the screen. Um, okay, so we, we're going to say... Um, R. So R. R. Okay, so for when, we, when we're talking about non-sex without consent... We're gonna call it. We're gonna call it R again. If you think this is stupid, thank YouTube's algorithm for the fact that we have to do this. Okay, so we're gonna say bang. The title is Bangladesh approves death penalty for arrests amid protests. All right. Okay. Bangladesh's government recently approved the death penalty as the maximum sentence in R cases following the release of harrowing footage showing a group of men attacking a woman that went viral on social media last week. This sparked days of protests in the South Asian country where rights say um, victims of sexual assault rarely see justice. Under the current law, the maximum sentence for non-consensual sex in Bangladesh is life in prison unless the accused murdered the victim. Um, local rights group Ain O Salish Kendra said that 889 women were arred in Bangladesh between January and August of this year alone. Yeah, I think this is a bad idea. But... Yeah, but it, but I think like this is this is I mean do we we have enough studies to show uh, that punishments like this doesn't actually deter the crimes more, and also the chances of you executing somebody that was accused falsely is high, and also I, I it's very it, it, there's always going to be that people like oh I'm against the death penalty but in this case like I said shut up. You're not against... If you say, I'm against the death penalty, but... As soon as you say, but, then you're not against the death penalty, right? But what do you guys think? Do you guys Are you guys against the death penalty? Well, I think that this is a way for the government to say, look, we're doing something. And that's... Whether it's working or works or whether it actually is going to change the dynamic on the ground as to what's happening with women or even men who are forced into um, non-consensual sex, um, it may not have any effect on it at all, but it is a way for the government to say, see, we listened to you, we increased the penalty, we did something, without necessarily addressing what could be the root cause or how do you change the culture, or what do you do um, so that this doesn't happen in a society, et cetera, or how do you, you know, rehabilitate people, so to speak, who think that these kind of things are acceptable. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can talk about it. I just really honestly think all it is is a move for them to say, oh, we heard you people, look, here's what we've done. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that the justice system works best if it just feeds into people's desire for revenge. And that is not what the justice system should be there for. The justice system is supposed to be there to protect citizens. And protecting citizens requires um, coming up with methods that would deter crime in the future so if you put somebody in prison even if you think like execution is a good idea or whatever whatever you come up with it's supposed to be a cost benefit analysis about what if we're what we're doing is it is it the is it the most likely way of making sure that more citizens are going to be protected from harm in the future? More people are going to, less people are going to be the victims of certain crimes. It's not, a, not at all, and it should not at all be about satisfying people's desire for harm on the people who have done wrong, okay? That is your personal desire. That is not what the government is meant to do. That the government is set to, supposed to figure, do studies and research and see how could we make less of this happen. Okay, and making less of this happen 
um, you know, death penalty. Like even the people who say, oh, we're against the death penalty because the greater punishment is for them to live long and suffer. Like, I mean, you know, that, you, you, that's not, the government is not meant to make you feel like, oh my God, yes, these people are suffering. Like, you know, that's not what the role of government should be, okay? And, and again, I, I, I say that while understanding why emotionally i'm not criticizing people for emotionally wanting that right like if you're like if your child was like killed or art in a situation and you want these people to suffer uh, it, it, even if i think that is like not the logical most logical way of going about solving things i'm not going to criticize people for emotionally desiring that right obviously this is not something that anybody could control whether it's justified or not justified it's irrelevant right obviously i would i would feel the same way right but again, just because it's completely natural and justified for people to feel that and want that, that doesn't mean that the government should give in to that. The government should be able to step back and should be. For example, a lot of people might feel like, you know, I, you know, fraud due process out the window. Like if my child was, for example, a victim, just, you know, I, I was almost at a word that I don't know if I could say. Do something to these people in the streets and what, let me watch them burn alive or something like that, right? Um, and again, if you are somebody, like if, for example, the mother of somebody that was a victim, I'm not going to criticize you for feeling that and wanting that. But I will, I do think a government should be, a government should be way above that. A government should, just because people want that, due process on average, for example, is a, a country that has those standards is going to perform better than a country that doesn't, even though the feelings are might, might be justified. But go on, Rivka. Um, so to piggyback on what you were saying, I mean, this is why we say in, you know, the United States and other countries and, you know, Bangladesh certainly qualify for this, that you want to be a nation of laws, not of men. Because the law doesn't, have those type of emotions it's supposed to apply it equally and use reason and logic and precedent and what are the rules and things like that you know men being mankind or humans are emotional and they do feel these things and extrajudicial punishment doesn't in the end serve anyone other than maybe to make people feel temporarily better that they, you know, had some sort of vengeance. But I think often people equate justice with vengeance or revenge because it is so often um, related in people's consciousness about religious punishment. And that is about just uh, revenge or punishment or vengeance not necessarily justice because if there if there was a case of justice where the people who were bad and did wrong things were stopped or caught and you know people who were innocent and wrongly accused were found to be you know not guilty all of those things then we wouldn't have a lot of the situations that happened in lots of holy books so there is a cultural mindset about that justice actually equals vengeance and i think that that's part of why often there is this sense of well we need to you know punish these people and we need to kill them and we need to you know be as harsh as possible not that i in any way am saying that you shouldn't have severe penalties for doing terrible things if you are caught and you know you are found guilty in a court. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about people's way of thinking about it and how to go about preventing it rather than just reacting to it after it happens. All right, Susanna, do you want to add anything? Um, no. Um, one thing that's often brought up is the um, argument for uh, castration, either chemical or otherwise, and that's something that's also very complicated. And, and so far, I've decided that I think that's something that I'm against. Um, there are. Yeah. Wait, you, you know. just said I just asked you if you want to add something, and you said no, and then you're now adding something. Oh, so, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> right. 
Yeah, I think it'd be interesting to have a conversation at another time about um, this debate around chemical castration of people who do crimes like this. Um, there are some specific instances where I think there may be some work when it comes to people who are attracted to children where it may actually be beneficial. Now I need to go look at that data again about how effective that is. Um, but I have complicated feelings about the implications of the state doing that to people's bodies. Um, yeah, so I'm just throwing that out. There's something to think about. Interestingly, though, and I'll leave it after this, is there are some offenders themselves who ask for it. It's not the state that's yeah. saying it. It's the offenders themselves because they're looking for some sort of outside solution. But that's I'm just leaving it there. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, again, their request is also irrelevant. The studies it should be the only thing I would. By the way, I would be totally for the death penalty if the, if the data actually showed that more lives would be saved more than you know more than if and more people would be protected from harm if that was the solution i would i mean i'm a utilitarian i would be like i would be switching sides right away um but anyways thank you for joining us subscribe to our channel hit the bell thingy if you haven't i don't know why what has what's holding you back okay if you haven't subscribed to our channel why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button. But nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that, but we don't care about that anymore, <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized. What does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 